surely that to make it there. Boots. Okay. My burden is too great. Okay. It's almost unbelievably good. <laughs> The roll on the movement speed is minimum. Every roll is... <laughs> no! The fury cost reduction min roll! Wow! Movement speed for 4 seconds after killing an elite is a bonus move? Dude. I'm... Look at these boots, dude. What? I didn't even know it could roll this well. The all stats is max roll. Yes, thank you. That is... Terrific. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't matter. It's like, amazing compared to what I have. Same. It's not the best, um, maybe it is the best, uh, special mod yeah, for Rend, but wow, that is beast mode. Look at these, the ones I'm using. They're actually basically the same. Ironically, these really aren't much of an improvement because I was using all stat fury cost reduction movement speed boots, but I get the movement speed after killing an elite as a bonus. So it's kind of sad that they're so good, but they're actually, I already had amazing boots. But well. What's going on everyone? This is new. We're back again for day two update. And there he is, kind of a uh, much more Chad looking barb than he was last time. Got some gear upgrades, some meaningful gear upgrades. I'm gonna show you a little bit uh, more. We're gonna dive into some of the gear uh, that I'm using today. I think it's, um, quite relevant to the evolution of the build still playing rend uh quite enjoying it gonna be swapping to whirlwind eventually uh you know i gotta say i really do enjoy this rend build uh the, it is my own build with the uh, <laughs> rupture and steel grasp um I, i've been taking inspiration from the build guides for certain things like which aspects to imprint in the paragon boards things like that they're a little bit out of my you know uh intuitive sense um, for people who actually did play the end game, they had they know a lot more about that. But I really like this build. So I'm going to show you a little bit of gameplay. We got a hell tide going on right now. I have completed my capstone dungeon. It was easier than expected, which I guess because you know I heard it was kind of hard to do the last boss, especially. But um, you know, Ren Barb specializes in single target damage. I was already doing World Tier Two, already being a solo Barb anyway, and I found it to be actually easier than most dungeons. Uh, I did wait till I was level 50 though, and I was doing some dungeons when I was underleveled. Uh, but I heeded the warning unnecessarily, I guess, so... Shot myself in the foot a little bit. I could have unlocked uh, the, the sacred gear and uniques and stuff a little more. I've only gotten the one unique that drops off Lilith, I think, automatically. Got a lot of sacred gear and got a couple of really awesome pieces, including the one you saw in the opening of the video, which was literally a perfectly rolled uh, boots. That's kind of why I showcased it. It was actually a perfect item, uh, which is extremely rare. All four affixes that were rolled on it were the best affixes you can get on a pair of boots. Uh, not perfectly rolled and obviously low level, but still quite uh, quite unusual and, and intriguing indeed. So hey, let's go into the game and kind of see where we're at. No queue times still. Uh, just getting right in. I cranked up the graphics a little bit here. Hopefully we don't have any problems. I usually don't run higher graphics when I'm recording or streaming. We'll see how it goes. Hopefully it uh, goes all right. One quick thing. Uh, I'd say day two is kind of marked by the open world just crazy open world and it's awesome there's so much stuff to do uh, day one was really all about the campaign it felt like the experience was kind of meta consolidated in the campaign yes i was exploring it and uh, realizing there was a huge open world but i wasn't really paying attention to most of the open world i was just doing the campaign uh, here day two i did uh, a lot more open world and by the end very end of the day i uh, got the capstone dungeon unlocked I haven't really even done a hell tide yet and uh but i've been doing some of the tree of whispers things that occurred after the campaign was unlocked with or without world tier three but we are on world tier three and i've been noticing that the legendary drop rate is kind of like what it was in the initial beta uh very often as uh getting legendary so maybe it's you know kind of like the the pre nerf drop nerf beta um frequency of drops like every goblin is dropping <laughs> uh, a legendary and most map bosses are dropping legendary 
or rather uh, dungeon bosses and a lot of events and legions and things that are dropping legendaries and even the tree of whispers suddenly dropping legendaries uh, pretty frequently but look at this screen here and uh, yeah you can see that we get some rewards as we do some progress in the open world in the zones you notice that the first three rounds are like really, really strong. A skill point, potion, and then another skill point, and then the fourth one's not very useful. And then the fifth one, obviously, is pretty strong with Paragon points. But I feel like uh, a day two, day three benchmark for me is uh, trying to kind of prioritize the zones whereby I complete three full rounds of this. I think it would be good. I'm also getting some Lil Lilith statues. That's a big part to uh, running a few dungeons specifically for legendary aspects. Uh, basically gotten all the legendary aspects I want now, I think mostly. Uh, Stronghold, doing a lot of those. Uh, one of my favorite things about the game, man. The open world thing. Actually, that is probably my favorite aspect of open world play is the strongholds. It's so cool how you go in there and like... It'll be like mysterious and you don't know what's going on and then, you know, suddenly you trigger the event and then you got to do all this stuff in there. And then after you finish and kill the, the boss there, it completely uh, zones you to another, to a, a new zone where you own it now and you got the waypoint. And then in some cases you spawned a brand new dungeon. Uh, in, in one case, I, I had to, I, I had to do a stronghold to do a dungeon to get an aspect <laughs> so i mean that was pretty cool uh the progression that takes place now i think that's actually really neat uh yeah so this is the hell tide and the tree of whispers is down here uh you can see i don't have any of the progress in the tree of whispers i've done like five turn-ins on that though but it's pretty cool i mean you do a dungeon you get five progress points you do one of these light pink ones quick soloable thing like the you know basements or whatever one point and then um the medium pink here is three points and quite often you can overlap this is something that's really cool you can like overlap two or even three events at once uh like maybe right here uh there's a legion event probably ties in in fact this might be like four different rewards i could do at once because it would be a legion event combined with probably just, just like looting uh animate or whatever uh, and then on top of that, you're also doing the, the event itself, getting the rewards there. And then you're even getting Helltide <laughs> currencies for it, maybe, too. It might actually be four and one, uh, which is pretty crazy. So, that, so I think it's kind of cool how you can, like, overlap a whole bunch of progression uh, at once by choosing those things. Um, yeah, if I wasn't recording, I'd probably just go straight to that Legion event. But for the sake of kind of showcasing a little bit of stuff... You got the Helltide event, and we got some currencies here. I got seven. I think you need at least 75 to unlock a chest. You get to select reward types that you want, well, within some choices. Helltide events are actually, I think, some of the hardest monsters. I noticed I take some of the most damage of all in here, and I feel like I've gotten my bar to a pretty good place. Dungeons are pretty easy, honestly. Uh, soloing dungeon, but the Helltide monsters, like, I'm, the damage you see me take right here is more than I usually take in a dungeon. That's the point I'm trying to make, so... Showcasing what I perceive to be the hardest content in the game at the moment. Also, you really don't want to die because you lose half of your cinders <laughs> when you die. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty wild. Uh, I still have a few things I want to work out on my gear. Uh, but anyway, there you go. So just getting absolutely chunked by that. Wow. Okay. <laughs> you know, I'll just leave that in there. That's whatever. I want I want some revenge. I can't believe how much damage you know, Maybe I need some more resistances or something. Okay, I don't know. Oh, multi-shot. All right. That's pretty crazy, man. Well, hey, you know, you can see how crazy hard this is. So I'm not kidding. Like, I basically never die in a dungeon. And then this is... It's actually the first time I've ever just completely been bricked by a single monster. Just, oh my god, I still almost died again. Obviously, that multi-shot that she has is crazy. Alright. <laughs> Well, that's gonna look funny for the video, but uh, you just have to take my word for it. My character does that. That's not an experience to normally see on this character. Um, granted, solo Barb is kind of rough, but uh, that that's absolutely the worst of it. <laughs> just getting completely uh, defeated one on one against one elite um, that only had one affix apparently. But anyway, let's go over some of the gear here. We got 
uh, in, in the pursuit of trying to get a little more tankiness, I've chosen to imprint some armor in here. I think this is pretty cool, uh, especially if it rolled higher. It'd be pretty good. The Barbarian is specialized in a lot of armor. It makes me take less damage from elements as well as uh, physical damage. And let's see, we also got, uh, this is halfway decent, uh, one right here. I don't want to spend too much time on these. Some of these aren't that important. I'm going to go over the important ones. Here are the same boots I'm still wearing, like, literally, like, <laughs> 14 hours later <laughs> after I found them. Still wearing them. Uh, let's see, what do we got? Oh, uh, this is actually, probably, this is the, the single best item that I've dropped right here. Because what this is, so the Barbarian Arsenal system is interesting because... I'm playing Rend or Whirlwind later. So this weapon here has to be prioritized for damage, right? But the bludging, the two-handed bludging weapon doesn't. It doesn't matter what this weapon is. It doesn't matter the rolls on it that much. Obviously, I care a little bit about the explicit. But this weapon is basically reserved as a stat stick. Uh, so even if I out-level it, it doesn't matter. Uh, if it has, like, the single best imp imp uh, or rather a legendary aspect on it, in the game for the build, then it's extraordinarily good. And this does, this actually has uh, one of, at least one of the top two uh, aspects that I would have for Rend as well as Whirlwind, I think. I think this is the one that carries over to Whirlwind too. I know this is definitely a good one uh, for Whirlwind. I think this might actually be the number two uh, Whirlwind. Yeah, I, I think it is uh, because it's just a crazy 60% damage multiplier. Once you get your rage situation figured out. Or Fury, sorry, Fury. Uh, then the single hand weapons, you know, I don't even have imprints on that. I just keep replacing this so much. I feel like I should probably start doing it, though, because I'm starting to get uh, a lot of materials here. What, what are they called? Where are they at? These right here, Baleful Fragments. I get these when I salvage legendaries, and I, I was very low on the number, but as you can see, I'm starting to suddenly get a bunch of them. These are for the armors. These are for the rings. Uh, so I should actually start imprinting some things on here. I can get a few, a couple extra little damage multipliers, but I have some of the best ones here already. This one's not actually that good, by the way. Uh, it would be good if I took Gushing Wounds uh, as, as a passive, but I took the one for Berserking instead. Still got this ring. I need to replace the ring. The ring and the pants are really low level. I need to replace them. Um, and I think I might actually change this imprint on the pants to another one that gives me, uh, what is it, 2? 20% damage reduction for 2 seconds after using a basic skill would be better than this. Uh, this amulet is a recent addition, uh, surprisingly super strong when I just kind of dive into the fray. I didn't realize how much life this is, but it makes sense to me now because, you know, we get life in a couple of goofy ways in this game, like life on kill and then like... Life regen only when you're out of combat. This is a really unusual case where you get like massive life regen in combat. Um, especially as a barbarian pulling things in and yeah, doing that whole thing. Which is pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. And then this ring has basically... A, this is a decent one for whirlwind, but it's like best in slot for rend. One of the best in slot ones, I think. So I'm not sure what to do with this. I kind of want to... Put something else on, like Fury per second during Berserking, because I've really made this into a Berserking build. Uh, but I gotta put this somewhere, so this is, you know, it's a perfect version of it, so I don't know what to do with it. Like, I, I should put this on the weapon, but then I'm gonna replace the weapon. So I don't know, I have to put it somewhere. Uh, but you can see, like, the, the second number is gold, so it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to put this on a two-hander, because that's not going to double in effect. It's only going to say, it's going to say, like, damage of your next core skill cast by 20% up to 30%. <laughs> not 60%. It's kind of stupid. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, I'll figure that out. Anyway, that's some of the gear. Uh, 1.8 million gold, for whatever that's worth for now. We got a build here. Recently swapped from Flay over to Lunging Strike. I noticed in a little bit of combat there. Um, this thing is way too strong. Honestly, one of the kind of complaints I have is this is... I don't know why this is so strong. It kind of takes me out of the experience of playing a Barbarian. It's honestly suddenly feel like I'm playing a Rogue or something like that. Uh, because it's like a Shadow Step with no internal cooldown. I feel like the class fantasy of a Barb should be... You know, it has, it has strengths and weaknesses. One of the major weaknesses of a Barbarian should be the challenge of closing the gap. Uh, and in uh, to compensate for that... If a Barbarian gets in range of hitting you, you should just get your face smashed in, like, way harder than any other class can, right? So I feel like that's the class fantasy of the Barbarian. This kind of 
circumvents uh, expectations or whatever. I, I'm not a big fan of this because it, it, it's very strong. It feels mandatory to take. The other options are kind of stupid. Even Flay, which has synergies with Rend and everything. Uh, but yeah, if, if I can just like shadow step over to everything constantly, then why wouldn't I take this? I hope they nerf it or give it an internal cooldown and maybe they could buff the barb in a different way or, you know, maybe the barb's strong enough already. Uh, it's not like Flay was terrible or anything, but it's just it's just ridiculous when, you know, one of the four options is like head and shoulders better than the others. So I didn't realize that because I didn't realize just how impactful that closing the gap quality of life would be. I'm not all for just making the Barbarian an easy class to play. That's not what I want. I want it to, to adhere to class fantasies. I want it to be challenging. I want to be able to smash monsters' faces in. I want to feel rewarded when I execute a build well. And the Ren build does that really well, actually, for the um, you know the abilities and things I'm using. Oh, yeah. Helltide expires in five minutes, so it's on a timer. I guess it's up about half the time. So, yeah. Maxed out Ren still. Everything down here is basically the same. Some extra points taken into... You know, just, uh, you know, damage reduction. Um, I don't have Fortify into the build. There is a one defensive aspect I can get Fortify back in, but I don't know how strong it'll be or how useful it'll be. I may test it out, but these are some good points uh, to take if I do that. I may try to get Fortify back in. But yeah, uh, Berserker, a lot of Berserking buff synergies. I ended up taking Unconstrained, I think is one of the best things you can do if you don't if you can't handle the unbridled rage it can't do that right now i don't have crit i'm not prioritizing crit you know getting it's hard enough right now to try and get the uh, legendary aspects right uh let alone try to get the explicits right and get like you know crit crit attack speed or whatever on rings uh, it's just a little too hard to do on a day two or maybe day three experience but you know we'll get there we'll get there I'll, i will have already swapped to whirlwind by then anyway but yeah, that's basically that. I guess there's also the Paragon board. I don't really know what I'm doing here. I'm just following a guide on this thing because, you know, I wasn't able to test this in the beta. Some people were. They know how it goes. And, you know, you've got Glyph Sockets. is something like Timeless Jewels in Path of Exile, except maybe 10% of, of the potency, if you will. Uh, but it is pretty cool. You go up here and you unlock it like five more times or something. You can twist and turn them around. That's eh, intriguing. you got some Glyphs down here. We're exploring some new stuff. This is kind of the the end game build. This is Diablo or Blizzard's answer to how great Path of Exile's complexity of the build is. So we'll see. I mean, it, it does feel complex when you don't know, don't know what you're doing. Um, but anyway, they they give a lot of different things and then glyphs and then you got little special notables here, I guess. But you kind of have to choose which ones you do, and then go up to the next area, which we can't see yet. Yeah. So. Again, uh, day two, marked by open world, uh, farming legendary aspects in dungeons as well, um, doing Tree of Whisper stuff, uh, just beginning to touch Helltide stuff, getting Lilith altars, things like that. It's quite overwhelming, uh, but uh, a lot of it is one-time only stuff, like the side quests and Liliths of altars in particular are one-time only. So I'd say like, of all the crazy amount of things you can do in the open world, about half of it is repeatable and half of it isn't. So that's not so bad. Uh, when I think about it that way. Apparently we don't have to do the campaign again either. But, uh, yeah, it's a big world. That is one big world. It's a lot bigger than I bargained for. <laughs> you get a lot, of, a lot of time out of playing this game, certainly. Um, as you can see, it's not that easy <laughs> based on how many times I died. But that was a bit of an outlier. Anyway, here I want to maybe, maybe we do a little rematch here. See if I can this again I'm probably not when I'm fighting suicide monsters yeah so I don't know not so hard when there's uh, no elites obviously so you see a lunging strike is just like <laughs> what is that look at that look at that no no cooldown no, 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 no. I think it's kind of ridiculous man Honestly, uh, too great. you let me know. Do you think it's ridiculous? I think it's kind of ridiculous. Well, I'm obviously not going to get to turn anything there for the hell tide because I didn't do anything. But anyway, that is the Barbarian. He's doing all right. Uh, I'll continue gearing up. Uh, the weapons are all pretty well updated. This weapon's fantastic. It's probably going to be the last thing I replace. 
this thing I'll replace pretty soon, but it's very strong for the level. Um, I think I got this right after the capstone dungeon in the second dungeon that I'd ran. Uh, some of the gear is way outdated, but it's still functioning all right. And I still got only half my bag space because of all these damn jewels and gems uh, as well. But uh, yeah, let me know if you're running a barbarian. Um, if you got any other tips, tricks for me. And let me know if uh, you learned anything new. If you're going to do barb uh, in the beginning, uh, definitely going to work out well in groups for sure. Solo, it can be a little rough. Uh, but uh, it's a grind I want to do. And I, wanna, I wanted to take up the challenge. I know I'll be rewarded in the end for grinding through the harder times. Uh, so everything is going as expected. I think tomorrow or day three, actually today because I'm recording this after the fact, uh, day three is going to be marked with probably a lot of like dungeon spam and, you know, continuing to do some of the dailies and stuff like that. Yeah, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, hopefully things continue on afoot. Level 51 now. You can see some other people are definitely doing better than me <laughs> in this area. Uh, so we're all, uh, we're not really racing or anything, just kind of have fun. And um, continue that long pursuit to level 100, I guess. Doing all these side requests. Got more side quests to do. All kinds of stuff. I'll catch you guys in the next video, which will be uh, coming out tomorrow. So, thank you for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.